If what you're here for is my dissection of the now famous Kate Middleton Mother's Day photo, I'm gonna put a timestamp down below so you can go straight to that part. I imagine folks finding this video from other places other than my usual audience are gonna be pretty confused about who I am. Give me just a minute to have a word. My name is Max. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer in Asheville, North Carolina. That's what I do for a living now. Uh, but my background is as a photojournalist and I have a degree in art. This channel is purely a hobby. It's purely for fun. And I mostly sit around and talk about my life and uh, 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 pipes, pipe smoking with all the other old dudes sitting in their garages on YouTube. We're called the YouTube Pipe Community. Sometimes I take folks along on my adventures in the woods uh, where I photograph uh, the Appalachian Mountains and the things that I find here. And it's very important to me to present those things as they really are. And so this video, I had the original idea for this video as a response, a video response to another one of the pipe presenters uh, whose name is Tom and his handle is Northwest Pipe Smoker. And he was talking about artificial intelligence as it relates to photography and some recent things in the tech world. So that's the context for this whole video. And my, my general thought on the whole AI thing is, you know, I think a lot of people are worried about Matrix and Terminator scenarios. I think, you know, Skynet coming online is a real concern for a lot of people. I'm not particularly concerned about that because what the hell am I going to do about it, man? Like, I am old and fat and have a bad ankle. I can't be fighting the T-1000. So Tom went to a presentation about artificial intelligence and it was kind of from an industry perspective. It was a community college, I think, he was talking about on his channel, which you should totally go subscribe to. Uh, Tom, is, Tom is the best uh, YouTube pipe presenter if you're into that sort of thing. And if you're not, you still need to go subscribe to him because his perspectives are really deeply thought out. Uh, and calmly presented with nuance and uh, a deep intellect. So anyway, go check Tom out. I'll put a link to him down below as well. But what Tom was talking about was artificial intelligence from the perspective of how it is gonna be used in industry. Uh, and, and he was saying that Microsoft has dumped $13 billion uh, into developing AI, specifically uh, AI generated programming code. So we're training computers, we're training programs to write programs, which does seem a little problematic. The benign idea behind all this, what I've heard from other sources and according to what Tom's guy said, is that AI will free us from mundane chores. So imagine you're a law clerk, you need to pick like uh, the specific case about something very particular out of some book on the wall and you need to write a brief or I don't know what the words are, but AI could do that for you and all you have to do is be a talented lawyer and argue your case. I find it really interesting that that's the same argument a lot of people made about the industrial revolution, right? We're gonna invent this technology, it's gonna take all the work out of our hands, we'll just do the fun part, and then in all this free time we're gonna have, we'll smoke our pipes and play Minecraft and go fly fishing. So as unconcerned as I am with the end of the world scenarios, I'm very concerned with the end of media scenarios. I think there's a there's a, um, a gap here in the public perception of AI as a big scary thing that's gonna bring about the Matrix and the reality which is actually much scarier. Like at least in the Matrix you're happy, you know? Is anyone really happy with what's going on right now? Tom doesn't talk about this much but I've followed him enough to know that he is a very capable photographer and he also mentioned some photography things in his video and so we're gonna, we're gonna get there uh, in just a minute. Where, where AI is marketed to me, I find that it is being marketed to me more and more, specifically by Adobe, because they know that I use their product all day, every day. They know that I spend a ton of my time, which ought to be free time because of the Industrial Revolution. They know that, I, that I'm sitting at my computer and I don't want to be sitting at my computer all day. So they think that their artificial intelligence is gonna help me not sit at my computer. It's classic. They've invented a computer program that will help me not use my computer programs. I think you could surmise from my background that I'm not a big fan of creating images out of nothing, that, uh, that I value the link that photography has with reality, and we'll get to that in a minute too. Every time I, I scroll through Instagram, or uh, even sometimes when I'm just trying to manage the software on my computer, it's saying, hey, don't you want to use this new AI feature? No, actually, I don't. I, I would rather just look at my images and work on them the way that I always have. However, I used to feel this way about digital photography as a whole. I am old enough uh, that I started with film and I still shoot a lot of film. And uh, I, I, I was very reticent 
to adopt digital photography. I love the analog process. I love working with my hands in a dark room to make an image. The moment I decided I couldn't do that anymore was when I would go shoot a story independently on spec and by the time I could have the film developed and scanned and email it into the editors, 20 other people had already gotten their photos in, it was clear I couldn't keep up if I was going to keep shooting film. So I'm watching these ads, I'm, I'm looking at these ads thinking, am I going to eventually be forced into doing this? There's already programs where I can, I can see the efficacy of this. I can, I can see there's a, there's a program that says, you know, it's not going to create your images, but it's going to use AI to choose which images you actually spend your time with. So you go to a wedding and you shoot 7,000 frames and then you come home, let the AI decide which ones are good enough for you to work on. I, I don't want to do that. That I don't like that idea, but from a business perspective, if everyone else is doing it, how can I not do it? So I'm sitting there editing my thousands and thousands of photos in one tab and listening to Tom in the other and, and all, everything you're saying, I'm like, I'm kind of nodding along like, yeah, this is how I already feel about it. And then he mentioned that uh, an executive from Samsung said uh, recently that there is no such thing as a real photograph. So this made my ears perk up. Uh, to wit, the executive that he was quoting was speaking to Tech Radar. His name is Patrick Tomei, I guess is how you pronounce it. He's the executive vice president for customer affairs of Samsung. Uh, and he said, there's a debate around what constitutes a real picture. And actually, there is no such thing as a real picture. As soon as you have sensors to capture something, you reproduce what you're seeing and it doesn't mean anything. There is no real picture. You can try to define a real picture by saying, I took that picture. But if you used AI to optimize the zoom, the autofocus, the scene, is it real or is it all filters? There is no real picture, full stop. Full stop is part of the quote. That is a bold statement. Wrong, but bold. This is a four by five negative. It is, uh, well, I don't know if you can see, this is old technology, they call it a flashlight. Uh, this is a picture of my cat, you can't really see that. But this, you can hear it, you can hear it. It's a real physical thing. It came out of my camera. I ran it through developer. Now it's a photograph. There's a physical product that does actually have objective value. You can, you can look at it and say, uh, this is the image that was recorded. And this isn't a film versus digital thing because digital cameras, the good ones, uh, write raw files. Barring certain extreme examples, we can assume that a raw file just as a negative is really, truly a photograph. The question then is, do we care? As I wade through frigid waters and crawl through mud and climb up rocks to get the photos that, that really personally matter to me, the ones that I find in the woods, um, it is very important to me that those photos are real. However, I'm not sure if it's important to anyone else. What I also discovered was blood, sweat, and tears to take a picture of some tree no one's ever seen before, but the photos that sell on the gallery wall are the trees that everyone has seen before. People want to buy a photo of something with which they're familiar because it makes them feel good. So now we get into what Tom was talking about in the end of his video, is photography an art? And I'm gonna roll my eyes pretty heavily here because I've already discussed this for five years with all of my art professors. Photography has always been the black sheep of the art world because of its inherent link to reality. That little tiny link with reality is what keeps photography from being a real art in a lot of academics' eyes. I could go on for hours about the uh, feelings and the thoughts that I put into making my photographs. Uh, my professors would always be able to counter with, yeah, but the light had to bounce off of something. There was something there uh, in front of your lens that you couldn't control. And when someone uh, makes a painting or a sculpture or a drawing, 100% of that comes from within. It's all about their own expression and, and my work was a response to the world around me. So number one, art professors, screw you. Number two, you got a pretty decent point. There is this bond that we feel that we, that we felt we can't break. The Samsung VP was speaking to Tech Radar in a story called 
Samsung defends AI photo editing on the Galaxy S24. Last week, I was in the store, I had my shopping list on my phone, pulled it out of my pocket, dropped it, and it shattered on the floor of the grocery store. So I went to Verizon, and uh, I got a new phone for free for only $200, and it was the Galaxy S24. So I now hold in my hand, me, the guy that's super concerned with real photos, I hold in my hand the device that Samsung had to come out and defend by saying there is no such thing as a real photo. Why did I choose this device? I didn't. I went to Verizon. I said, my phone's broken. What can you do for me? I have moved on, whether I wanted to or not. Can I choose not to use the AI photo? Of course. Of well, I guess, right? I mean, I can turn off the setting, but I don't know what the phone is doing between when I hit the shutter button and when I get the photo. So now I have the demonic AI device in my pocket, and I'm going to use it because I'm a self-employed artist and I'm broke and the phone was free. I mean, I paid for it, but it's free. That's how phones work. And I'm, I'm going to use it and eventually I just won't even think about this. I'll just shoot my photos and be like, oh, that looks good. And that leads us to what I really want to talk about, which is, of course, the royals. So I am not a royal watcher. I don't care. Americans fought a war so that we would not have to care about these people. Uh, I do kind of, just because I read news, I kind of know the royal family has had a rough time lately. Uh, I saw that the queen died. That's very sad. She seemed like a nice lady. I saw that Prince Charles got, uh, King Charles, excuse me, got, uh, became king and then immediately got cancer. That, that sucks. I, I wouldn't want anybody to have to go through cancer. And then I saw kind of, yeah, Kate Middleton, she had this, uh, this abdominal surgery. She's going to be out of public for a while. Then I saw the headline that said she had altered a photo and that's when I started caring because that's something... I know something about. I wanted to see the photo, like everybody else. Let's see what she did. Let's. What did she do? Did she put like horns coming out of somebody's head or what? No. It's just a family photo. The main impression that I have as an American about the royals is that those poor people live these horrible lives where everyone dissects their every move. Granted, everyone is also funding all of their largesse. I, I don't. This system is very foreign to me. Whatever, whatever. But I would not want to be a royal and have my life dissected in minute detail every time I post a photo. So, with that in mind, let's go over to my screen and we're going to dissect the minute details in this photo they posted. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of look at the photo. There's value to pixel peeping, but there's also value to looking at a photo and saying, does this feel real? And no, it doesn't. I shoot photos of lots of families and it is so rare to get uh, to get everyone looking at the camera the same at the same time, not blinking at the same time, to have e even a halfway decent expression on their face at the same time, to get a photo with three children, all of whom are in the peak of mid laughter. Um, it, it looks as if you have just told each of these children individually a joke that they really found funny, and you caught the perfect moment when they're really laughing. I, I don't. I don't think this is a real image, just, just from that. Uh, so then we zoom in and we look at the sleeve that everyone has been talking about. Uh, and yes, Princess Charlotte's sleeve has been altered, superimposed. Something is going on right here where the pattern from her skirt has intruded into the pattern of her sweater. Yeah, that's, that's 100% been altered. Um, but more than that, what drew my uh, eye first, looking for, for alterations, what, what drew my eye first was um, this issue over here with Kate's right hand being significantly more blurry than anything around it. Also over here, we see the doubling of the pattern in, uh, I don't know this kid's name, in this kid's sweater. Uh, nowhere else in the sweater do we see a doubling of the pattern. I'm sure this is a you know, $500 sweater, uh, and would, w that's not actually there in real life. That's a, that's a perfectly woven pattern in real life. So I think that is definitely an alteration. Uh, everybody talks about the kid's weird hand position. That doesn't bother me at all. Kids, kids do weird things with their hands. There are lots of other things that everyone has pointed out. There is a, a an issue with the zipper here. I think that's definitely an alteration that, that where does the zipper go? When, when you open your eyes, for patterns like that. You can't unsee them. So what I notice when I look at this is, uh, again, this, this poor kid that we're all staring at so closely, um, there are definitely parts in his hair that don't seem to be continuous. 
Um, we don't see, for example, this line continuing in, in, in the way it should with the sharpness present there. But yeah, to answer the basic question, has the photo been altered? Absolutely it has, for sure. And that's admitted by, uh, by Kensington Palace now. More importantly, it just doesn't pass the vibe check, right? We know it's a composition, but the question is, is it an authentic representation of a moment? Do all the elements of the composition come from the same moment? I am not convinced they do. So that's my analysis of the photo. It is absolutely altered. Does that mean that the darkest conspiracy theories are true and Kate is being held prisoner in a basement while the royals use AI to generate happy, smiling pictures of her? No, it absolutely does not. However, this is what is interesting to me. I think the simplest explanation is that the photo is as it was presented. It was probably shot by William uh, on a phone or some sort of device. He took a bunch of frames some sort of AI program composited them into one and they just sent it to the press without a second thought. That seems like a reasonable explanation to me. Even if that is true, there is still a very stark implication there, which is that even the royal family is not exempt from this inexorable march toward everything being controlled by AI that we carry around in our pockets. But even that explanation doesn't quite hold up. And here we get into some interesting media literacy issues, which is if that is truly what happened and there's this huge controversy and, oh, Kate's dead or they've kidnapped Kate, or, why wouldn't you just release a couple of the real photos? Kate came out and made a statement that said, oh, you know, I'm like many amateur photographers, I like to dabble in photo editing. Okay. Um, so you're asking me to believe, A, that the Princess of Wales is using her own time to sit in front of a computer manually editing photos? Okay, maybe so. She's recovering some, from surgery. She doesn't have anything else to do. That still doesn't explain why you don't release the regular photos, just to quell the controversy. Neither, then, does the alternate explanation hold up that uh, this is a false proof of life for Kate and the reptilian overlords are torturing her in a lab somewhere and they generated this photo to try to convince us otherwise. Because if that is truly what they did, why did they let such a sloppy Photoshop job get out to the press? Whoever posted this photo knew that people would go over it as if it were the Zapruder film. People are going to dissect every pixel of this photo just as we have. They knew this would be caught. What's with the vague statements? What's with the grainy photos of her in a car? Why, why are they just fanning the flames? Are they stupid? Of course not. They're incredibly smart. I think what we're looking at here is the first case of a false flag AI scandal. I think that this photo was purposefully released to draw attention, either just because the royal family lives on attention and they need to stay relevant, or because they don't want people talking about something else, King Charles's cancer, for example. Think about it. I didn't make a video about King Charles getting cancer. Why am I making a video about this? Because it's a, it's a photo. It's easy to look at. It's easy to dissect. It's, it's a thing people can wrap their brains around. And because we all know that AI is now encroaching on our reality, it's very easy to believe that something is being hidden, so let's dig deeper. It's a distraction. It's smoke and mirrors. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not royal literate enough to know what they're distracting from, but I do know that this is what people in power do to control the narrative. Everybody thinks that AI is the big threat. No, the big threat is that the average person does not have the bandwidth to even care what's real. I'm dunking on the royals, but it's way more obvious here where the entire country is being held hostage by a group of people for the last eight years that have no even tenuous connection to the truth, but they can speak really loud because our media rewards anything outrageous. I don't have the time or energy to pay attention to the government meeting happening down the street, but I know that Marjorie Taylor Greene once tweeted about Jewish space lasers. I started out by saying I don't care about the Terminator or the Matrix because I can't fight that anyway. What can you fight? What can you do? The answer, if there is one, is we can mind how we pay attention. We have entered an era in human development where uh, the big corporations or those in power actually don't want your money. Think about it. How much money do I have in the bank? A couple grand? 
What does that matter to Google or to the president or to the royals? It doesn't. What matters is my attention. I am worth more to Google or Instagram uh, scrolling through ads than I ever would be as a paying customer because the advertisers are other corporations and they're the ones with the big bucks. Our attention, the bandwidth of attention, is a very, very precious resource. And if I spend that worrying about Kate Middleton or Donald Trump, I can't spend it on the things that matter. AI did not exist uh, in the Gulf of Tonkin. AI did not exist during Watergate. Computers uh, were barely a commonplace thing when Princess Diana was killed, died, whatever. Unless you are in that government meeting yourself, anytime you pick up a newspaper, anytime you watch the news, you scroll through your phone, you are seeing what they want you to focus on. Who is they? I don't know. Reptilians, corporations, the government, the royals, whatever. The Terminator, The Matrix, we've come up with entire sci-fi franchises to deal with our fears about being lied to through incredibly convincing simulation technology. We're way more concerned about novel technologies than we are the fact that we've been lied to the whole time because most people don't actually care about truth. Most people just want to feel better. Life is hard. We want to feel good. If feeling good is what you get from clicking some AI hottie on Instagram, or if feeling good is what you get from being fed a news story that confirms your already existing worldview, most people will take that deal. So if you're going to get out of that, if you're going to step out of that matrix, you have to be willing to be bored and uncomfortable, and you have to find better things to focus on. That is that's the real challenge. That's what I got for you. Thank you so much for watching. Keep the ins out for the ties that bind.